happened in your area that you think everybody should know. This is Maddie Clifton. I personally hate that if you Google her right now, her murderer's image comes up before her own image. So take a good look. I'm sorry, I have a lot of rage concern in this case because I was about Maddie's age when she went missing and she went missing in Jacksonville, Florida. Her photo was everywhere. The community was desperate to find her. My mother taught me like stranger danger from this case, okay? She was missing for a little over a week and it's, it's insane, so bear with me. On November 3rd, 1998, Maddie Clifton went missing. She was eight years old. The community went nuts trying to find her and across the street, the Phillips family was searching as well. Phillips, who was 14 years old at the time. The search went on for so long that they doubled it from $50,000 for a reward to $100,000. It wasn't until a little over a week later that Melissa Phillips, Joshua's mother, was cleaning his room when she thought his water bed was leaking. When she looked under the bed, she found the remains of Maddie. All right, it gives me the creeps to have him behind me. I literally hate the man. I'm thankful that Miss Phillips ran out and immediately told the cop. He is currently serving life in prison, but like and follow for part two. Hey, I can't be the only one. Who else knows people that have killed other people? Finally, something that I can actually relate to. Um, so my grandma, my grandma killed her mom, so she killed my great grandma. Um, it's kind of a crazy story, but back in the 90s, my grandma was um, over at her house giving her a bath. She was elderly, so my grandma was kind of in charge of taking care of her. Um, during the bath, my grandma brought up the past about how she was abused as a child by one of her stepdads, and her mom then basically admitted to knowing about the abuse, but blamed her for it instead of the, the stepdad, which sent my grandma into a rage. Um, she ended up drowning my great-grandma, and then after she was dead, um, instead of calling the police, she cut up her body into eight different pieces, put them in garbage cans, filled the cans with cement, and then put these garbage cans in different um, storage units all throughout my hometown where I grew up. Um, when the police were investigating, she lied and said my great-grandma was in Hawaii with this wealthy man she met and even faked letters from her. It's pretty crazy. I asked Google about the mysterious staircases in the woods, which according to Jesse V's recent video are gateways to hell, and I know where to find one. Stories say that the stairs are only found deep within the woods, often being associated with sinister activity for those who climb them. The video specifically says do not climb them, but come on, I mean. <laughs> After arriving and a bit of searching, we found it. I found them again daring myself to go up. With each step, I felt more and more uneasy. But after making it to the top, made it. my cameraman spotted something unusual. Yo, what? What is this? Like for a part two. Horror movies based on true events, part one. First up, we have Jennifer's Body, which stars Megan Fox and released in 2009. This was inspired by the Elise Pollard case of Arroyo Grande, California. She went missing in March of 1996. Eight months later, her body would be discovered stabbed to death in the woods. This had been done by three friends who were part of a death metal band and they said they sacrificed her because they wanted fame. The next film is The Strangers. This one actually has two different instances that inspired the movie. The first was the creator's own childhood. He said that there had been unknown people knocking on neighbors' doors. The ones that had let them in actually ended up dead. The second was Charles Manson in his cult called The Family. The incident he used was the Sharon Tate murders on August of 1969. Over the course of two days, they murdered six people after invading two homes. Hi, I'm Kim, and this is the senseless murder of Emma Walker. 16-year-old Emma Jane Walker attended Knoxville Central High School in Knoxville, Tennessee. Emma was passionate about cheerleading and was the only freshman to make it onto her high school cheerleading team in 2014. That same year, she met Riley Gall. There was something off about Riley, though. He was extremely possessive. He tried controlling what she wore, who she hung out with, and would even wait at her work for hours until she got off. Their relationship began falling apart. Riley began Snapchatting Emma, saying he wanted to kill her or himself if she dumped him again. Emma's parents grew concerned, so they banned Riley from their house and took Emma's phone. Emma officially broke things off when Riley was at Maryville College. Riley tried to overdose but failed, sadly. One night, Emma started receiving strange texts from an unknown number. One read, I have someone you love, and if you don't comply, I will hurt them. It was actually just Riley pretending to be kidnapped. He also pretended to be unconscious in her bushes when her and her friends walked outside to investigate. In the middle of the night, on November 21st, 2016, Emma's dad awoke to banging noises. He checked on Emma, but she seemed to be asleep. At 6 a.m. the next morning, her parents found her dead. Riley had shot her in the head through her house while she slept. He also tried to dispose of the gun in the Tennessee River. Riley serving a life term. Three podcasts I will not shut up about. Gone is all about things that are missing. It's the perfect mix of crime, history, and mystery, and it's just so well-researched. 
this is actually happening is so binge worthy. It's all first person narration about the craziest shit you have ever heard happening to people. And of course, criminal, I don't think Phoebe Judge can do any wrong. So if you like a soothing voice and an insightful look at crime, this is for you. If there's ever been a cover up, it's been this case. On the night of August 23rd, 1987, Don Henry and Kevin Ives went out hunting in Alexander, Arkansas. At around 4 a.m., the two boys were hit by a train. The deaths were initially ruled an accident by the state medical examiner, who said the boys were sleeping on the tracks due to marijuana intoxication from smoking 20 joints, and the authorities closed the case. The problem with that is that a second autopsy done at the parents' insistence showed that the boys had only smoked one joint and that they were already dead before being laid on the tracks. The leading theory is that the boys were murdered because they stumbled upon a drug trafficking operation involving police officers and high up Arkansas officials. Hi guys, welcome back to True Crime with Darius. Today we're covering the case of the Popine sisters as recommended by Adiana's. So on February 2nd of 1933, Renee Lancelin called the police to come to his mansion because his daughter and his wife were extremely late to a dinner party that he was waiting for them to get to. And when police arrive, they come to an extremely gruesome scene, especially for the time. Um, they found the bodies of both Genevieve and Leonie Lancelin. Um, their eyes were go gouged out, they were mutilated beyond recognition, um, and part of the mutilation was actually in their genitals. But not only were the bodies of Lancelin women within the home, the Papine sisters were actually in the home as well, but they were upstairs laying in a bed together naked. So the police are sitting in this home, this mansion, with all of the power out, and they're asking the Papine sisters, like, hey... Um, why is the wife of your master and his daughter dead and you guys are in the home naked? Undeniable evidence that Kurt Cobain did not himself part for. With the position that Kurt's body was found, he would have had to break his own wrist to hold the gun at the angle he did. Allow me to explain. And yes, before anyone comes for me, this is an image from the documentary Soaked in Bleach. I know my followers have mixed opinions about Soaked in Bleach, but I personally feel like it would be disrespectful to use actual crime scene photos. And this is the next best thing, so deal with it. All right, let's get into it. So Kurt's holding the gun, right? The barrel of the gun, I believe, with his left hand, which means he would have had to pull the trigger with his right hand, but he's left-handed, so. When Kurt's body was found, the gun was upside down, so it means he shot the gun upside down, right? Which means that the shell casing would have come out on the right side of Kurt. But the shell was found on his left side, which could easily be explained. The shell bounced off of something on his right side, flew over his body and landed on his left side, right? But there was nothing near him for the shell to bounce off of. I'm sorry, I'm posting part five right now. I don't have enough time. This is John Marshall High School in the Los Feliz neighborhood of Los Angeles, where Elizabeth Short, the Black Dahlia, had a photo shoot. It is allegedly the last known photos of Elizabeth Short alive. For more dark LA history, click the link in the account bio. Maybe I consume too much true crime, but I have a question for you. Do you ever wonder how many houses you've passed in your lifetime that have somebody locked in the basement? There's a dark secret in Boston's oldest graveyard. Established in 1630, the King's Chapel burying ground used to resemble more like a boneyard. People were buried in a very chaotic pattern and families' bones were mostly crumbled up together. Hence, if you were walking these hollowed grounds before the 1800s, you were most likely stepping on a few bones. Many notable people are buried here, including John Winthrop, the founder of Boston. But another infamous person is buried here, George Parkman who was a Boston Brahmin, aka a city aristocrat, that was murdered by a Harvard lecturer, John Webster. He killed him because he owed him a lot of money and his body was found in Webster's Harvard laboratory, ended up becoming the very first forensic case in America. However, I mentioned bones earlier. Well, if you were to find a bone in the graveyard, you had to place it here, in this deposit box. It's something you'll find in older graveyards, and here's where George Parkman's remains lie. Stay curious, my friends.